I would say it's taking someone who takes a very unique, difficult problem and turning it around and very strategically and methodically moving that current position, whether it's a decision or a policy, moving it and advancing it to the next step. I would highly recommend a comprehensive energy policy for this country. We're one of the only countries without a comprehensive energy policy. It should include a balanced portfolio. We need to include nuclear, fossil fuels, biofuels, renewables, energy efficiency, and any of those new fuels that haven't even been discovered. It needs to be comprehensive. We're very fortunate in the United States in that we have those basic fuels. We have natural gas, we have coal, we have oil, and of course we have an abundance of uranium, which is essential for nuclear power. The first recommendation is to really elevate STEM education. And this is not just STEM education at K through 12. This is STEM education in all of our curricula. We need it in our higher education. When you start dissecting where our students are currently majoring, whether it's in our university system, whether it's in community colleges, or even in high school, many of these schools, most are majoring in the fine arts. And we need to move that to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And oh, by the way, I'd love to add in health because that's a direct link to the job creation. When you look at the highest growth rates of jobs for the future and currently, jobs that are currently available, they're in energy, they're in healthcare, they're in technology, they're in those innovative fields. And what is happening for the most part, we're having to bring in people to fulfill those workforce deficits, or those gaps from other countries. Thus, we need to generate and really educate our own. I would ask them to step forward be bold, be a risk taker. Of course, there are calculated risk. And I'll give you an example. When I, I currently chair the community college system for North Carolina, when we were faced with the big question of should we educate undocumented students, primarily Latinos, should we educate them moving from high school into the community college system? A lot of people said no. But I said yes, and we voted unanimously to admit undocumented students. Why? Because I strongly believe an educated workforce is much better than an uneducated one. And many of the people that are here today will be our workforce for tomorrow. And an educated workforce is much better for all of America, and really for the world. The belief that someone had to step forward, the strong support of our forefathers and our foremothers who paved the way, strong teachers from the very beginning, having grown up in an integrated environment, the first to go to an integrated school. I developed a strength and a confidence and that unique competence and courage to know that if I didn't try to step forth, then perhaps we wouldn't have change. And it's better to make the change than to allow someone else to do it and go down the wrong path. When you think about the United States and how it was formed, it too took game changers. So I believe every one of us should step forward. Just know that all leaders don't. Strong, ethical, trustworthy, respectful behavior. The belief that everyone adds value. No matter what the type of job, no, what, no matter how high the person may be in terms of a job label, but the belief that we can work much better as a team and make a profound impact than individually. So I have those core values, faith, education, 
and of course that whole family friend. I believe if you do it right, we can be successful. Breaking the glass ceiling. I wrote a paper in graduate school about breaking the glass ceiling. I was one of the only ones in my MBA class. And at that time, it was said that women of cover, color, African American women, could not move to the C-suite and could not become an officer. Well, I stand before you to say that you can do it and we can do more. The key is to bring others along the way and help them navigate the path to success. The second was when I was elected to chair the North Carolina Community College System, the first woman and the first African American to ever chair. And it's not about me, it's about what I'm going to do or what we can do collectively to move and open the doors for others. Because if, if it's just about me and I leave no legacy, then I've really wasted time. Right now, I'm so proud of our president, President Barack Obama, but I'm equally proud of the First Lady. So I think both of them are game changers for the United States and for America. I also look at some people who may not have titles. I think they are game changers. There's a young lady who was an, an undocumented student. She's currently finishing her dentist degree, dental degree, at UNC Chapel Hill. If we had not changed that policy, she would not be going to dental school. And when she finishes, she plans to go back into her community in Robinson County, very, very poor area of our country, of North Carolina, and she plans to administer her dental skills to help her community. And I would say she'll probably bring other dentists along the way. So it's those unsung heroes that too, they are two game changers.